Hey guys! How are you today? My name is Brittany if you don't know and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you are subscribed and if you are subscribed thank you so much. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the very basics of crochet and this is going to be the first episode in a beginner focused video series that I will do. So if you don't know how to crochet at all or knit or do anything fiber related, no worries because I am going to show you all that you need to know to successfully get started crocheting. I guess that's all that needs to be said, so with that let's just pop right into the video. See you guys there. The very first thing you need to know when starting off with crochet is what yarn to use. So for a beginner, I recommend using a worsted weight, which is also known as weight 4 or medium in the US. And this particular yarn is Yarnspiration's Lily Sugar and Cream, which is 100% cotton. Now, another option would be this Red Heart Super Saver, which is 100% acrylic, and this one is also a worsted weight. This is actually the exact scheme that I used when I first started crocheting, but if you don't want to use acrylic, I do recommend this Lily Sugar and Cream cotton because it is cheap and easy to use for beginners. Now, for these worsted weight yarns, they'll usually recommend you use a 5 to 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, and that is going to look something like this. So this is a clover 5 millimeter hook right here, which I would not recommend for beginners because they are pretty pricey. But today we are actually not going to be using this hook, so I will put it to the side. I do recommend for beginners that you get an aluminum crochet hook. And this one right here is Susan Bates, and it is four millimeter. And they usually come in packs of six, so if you're a beginner, I recommend getting the pack that goes from 3.75 to 6.5 millimeters, because those are good sizes for beginners to start off with, nothing too small. And this is the same size hook in the Clover brand, and you can just kind of see the difference right here. Now, you will also need a darning needle to start off with, which is what you will use to weave in your ends when your project is complete. But we are not using that in this video, so I'm going to move it to the side. We are also not using either of the worsted yarns in my demonstration today, so again, put those to the side. So we are left with a 6mm crochet hook, and this is the Clover brand as you can see, and we will be using the Bernat Maker Home Deck Yarn. And for this particular demonstration, I'm using this yarn because the stitch definition is very clear, which makes it so much easier for beginners to see what the hell I'm doing. And by the way, this is a bulky weight five yarn, which is why I'm using a larger crochet hook. So the first thing we're gonna be creating today is the slip knot. So I'm gonna move you guys closer right now. Now, this is the shape that you want to start off with when creating a slip knot. So let's pick this up and make sure that it's retaining its shape. Then you're going to pinch the tail end with your index finger and thumb, and then you'll take your right index finger and place it through from top to bottom. Then you are going to twist upwards with your thumb on the bottom piece of yarn, and then release your thumb so that you are now working with an X. All right, then insert your thumb back into the loop from bottom to top. And then with these two fingers, I'm going to pinch this top piece of yarn. And then I'm going to pull it through that loop. And when we're pulling through, you want to make sure that you are tightening the bottom piece of yarn rather than the top so that you don't accidentally unravel the loop. All right, and there is our slip knot. So now that that is done, we can start working on our chain. So you will pick up your hook and slip knot. And this is what we call the tail end of the yarn right here. And this is what we will refer to as our working yarn. Now you want to insert your hook through the loop just like so. And take both ends like this and pull tight on your hook. 
Now, different people hold their hook in different ways, which I will not be going over in this video. So if you want to know more about that, check out my blog link down below. I hold my hook with my thumb on the groove right here, and then with my index or middle finger on the back, just like this. I think really it's whatever way is intuitive to you. Okay, so it's finally time to get started on our chain. So to set up our yarn, you first want to grab your working yarn with your pinky, just like this. And you want the grip loose enough so that the yarn can easily slide through your finger. You don't want it too tight because then it becomes difficult to pull through, which will make the stitches too tight. The next step is to wrap it around your pointer finger like so, going right over the top of the finger and bringing it around the back. Then we will take our middle finger and thumb and grab onto the slip knot right here. All right, and that's how we get set up to crochet. Now let's begin chaining. To start, we want to grab our yarn by wrapping it around the top of the hook from back to front. And as you can see, we've caught it in the head and this is called yarning over. We'll then twist the hook towards us so that the head is facing downward and pull it through the loop that's already on our hook. And then you want to twist your hook away from yourself so the head is now facing upward again. So I will show you that again. You're going to yarn over, twist the hook towards you, pull it through the loop on your hook, and then twist away from you. And we have now just completed two chains. So let's do it once more. We'll yarn over, twist towards us, pull through the loop, and then twist away. All right, let's back it up a little bit. So we'll yarn over, twist towards, pull through, twist away. So I'm gonna continue until I have a total of 10 chains made. Now this is what your chain should be looking like after you finish. As you can see, this one is pretty uniform and that's just because I've been crocheting for a while now. But yours may be a little looser, a little tighter. You just wanna make sure it's not too tight. Otherwise, we won't be able to get our hook through the stitches. So just continue to practice your chain until you are comfortable with the way it looks. And once you're done with that, come on back to this video because we are now moving on to creating our first single crochet. So when making our stitches, we want to work back on this chain from right to left. And that is if you're righty, so I'm sorry lefties, I cannot help you right now. So we are going to now learn how to make a single crochet. And we will start by working this second chain from the hook that is the first chain right there, and we will never work in the first chain. So we'll be working our first stitch in the second chain right here. And as you can see, the chains kind of make a V shape. So the left side of the V is the top loop, and the right side of the V is the bottom loop. So we are only going to be working in the top loops right now. To start our single crochet, we want to insert our hook into the top loop only. And as you can see, we just picked up that one loop. Then you will yarn over just like we did for our chain, twist the hook towards you, and then pull it through just the first loop on your hook. Okay, then twist away. And we now have two loops on our hook. So we will yarn over one more time, twist towards us, and then pull through both of these loops and then twist away. And that is your first single crochet. Now we will do the exact same thing in what is considered our third chain, which is right here. So you will insert into the top loop only. Okay, two loops on your hook. Then you will yarn over 
twist towards you and pull through the first, then untwist. We now have two loops on our hook, so we're going to yarn over again, twist towards us, and pull through both loops on our hook. All right, then untwist. And that is single crochet number two. So I will show you guys one more time. So we'll be working the fourth chain now, but it will be only our third stitch. So we'll insert into the top loop only. Yarn over and pull through. Then untwist. So now we have the two loops on our hook. We will yarn over again, twist towards us, and pull through both of those loops and then untwist. All right, so now we have three completed single crochets. So to finish row one of single crochet, you will continue to do this in every single chain all the way down. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit so we can get back down to the end of this row. All right, now this is our very last chain and you wanna make sure you don't forget about it. Again, we're just going through that top loop and making the single crochet like we have been. All right, so we've now just completed our first row of single crochet and we should be counting a total of nine stitches in this row. And the reason there's only nine instead of 10 is because the first chain that we made does not actually count as a stitch. It's what we call a turning chain. And the turning chain does not count as a stitch, at least for single crochets. We use a turning chain every time we make a new row so that we are at the correct height of whatever stitch we're using. This way the edges of our work will stay straight and won't end up decreasing and looking messy. So let's start our second row of single crochet. The first thing we want to do is make our turning chain, which will be one. Okay, so we will chain up one and we will just yarn over, twist towards us and pull through the loop on our hook and then we will untwist. Now we will flip our work just like this so that we are working from right to left. And if you are a righty, you will always be working from right to left. So this chain one does not count as anything, it is just for us to turn our work. Now, as you can see, there are these V's on top of our stitches, and what we're going to do for every row besides our foundation chain is work so that the whole V, or both loops, will be on our hook. Okay, so just like this, you can see both loops on the hook. And we're going to do that for all of the V's, we'll go right under each of them. So for single crochets, you always want to work in the very first stitch because this chain one does not count as anything. And as you can see, there are these holes right here, and it's kind of like they're on a second V almost. Now we will insert into this very first stitch right here, and again, pick up both loops. And then we're gonna do the same thing where we yarn over and pull through both of the loops right here and then untwist. So we now have two loops on our hook. So we will again yarn over, twist towards us, and pull through both of those loops. So that is gonna be the first stitch of our second row. Now we will insert our hook into the very next stitch right here. And again, here is the V right there, but we are inserting it right here in that space. Okay, we pick up both of those loops. So again, we will yarn over, pull through both those two loops right there. And now we have two loops left on our hook, so we will yarn over, pull through both of those. Awesome, so that is gonna be your second single crochet. Now you will continue doing this in every single stitch. So we're going right into the next one right here, as you can see. We'll insert into that little space 
Make sure we're picking up both loops. Bend yarn over, pull through. Two loops on your hook, so you will yarn over and pull through both two. So I'm gonna finish this row a little bit faster so that we can get to the end. And you wanna make sure you're counting the exact same amount of stitches in each row. So I would recommend counting as you go. Now we are at the very last stitch in this row and it may be a little bit difficult for you to see, but there is that V right there. So we are going to insert into the space right here and you wanna make sure that you are picking up both loops, okay? Then we will yarn over and pull through and then with two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through both. Okay, so now we count again. All right, and that, my friends, is how you create single crochets. So for the third row, it would be exactly the same as the second row. We will chain up one, flip our work, and then you insert into the very first stitch with your hook and pick up those two loops. Then you'd yarn over and pull through. And with two loops still left on your hook, you yarn over and pull through both two. So for beginners, working single crochet rows and trying to get them straight is the perfect way to start practicing. So I'm gonna finish a few more rows off camera and come back and show you what it looks like with a few more done. So I just finished doing 10 total rows of single crochet and I'll just show you a close up so you guys can see what it looks like on both sides. All right, so this is what the front would look like and we flip it over, that is what the back looks like. And as you can see, the edges are straight and not bending in or out. And at first, your edges may not be this straight, but it just takes practice, so don't get discouraged if it's not perfect the first time. Single crochet is the first stitch most people learn, so once you feel comfortable with this stitch, then I would recommend moving on to the half double crochet, which will be episode two of my beginner series. All right, guys, that is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to comment and like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. I make weekly to bi-weekly crochet patterns, and I'm going to be doing this beginner series over the next few weeks. So make sure to turn on your bell notifications so you will not miss an episode. I will leave all of my socials right here if any of you guys want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest. And also I will leave my blog down below as well where all of my written patterns are located. That is going to do it for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you all in my next video. Bye! I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> Bye.